we have stated the derivative of the arc sine, but we've also made the observation that we're frequently more interested in this as an integration tool. Every time you learn a derivative, after all, you learn an associated antiderivative or indefinite integral, if you prefer. Let's look at two examples using this formula. Starting with this, the indefinite integral of one divided by the square root of one minus four x squared. We start by recognizing that this looks really similar to this. I mean, if we didn't have that four there, these would be identical. So how can we get rid of the four? We could try a bit of u substitution in the sense that 4x squared is the same as the product 2x squared. So if we let u be 2x, this would be one minus u squared. And assuming that we can get rid of this dx, we could then use this formula. Can we get rid of the dx though? Well, we can indeed, without a huge amount of effort, to turn this dx into a du, we need to have a two. We don't have a two, but if we want a two, we can certainly put one in here as long as we also put in a one half term so that we're not changing the integrand. This one half is a constant, it can be pulled out of the integral giving us one half the integral of two dx, precisely what we need, divided by the square root of one minus two x, squared. And we now can convert to use one half the integral of one over the square root of one minus u squared du. And this, let's see if we can get them both in frame. This 
And this are the same. I mean, the only thing that's different is that we have a U here instead of an X. So this indefinite integral is the arc sine of U plus a constant. one half the arc sine of u plus a constant equals one half the arc sine of two x an arbitrary constant times one half is still an arbitrary constant. So we'll keep calling it C. And there we go with a bit of U substitution. We have successfully computed this indefinite integral. The next example will be a little more complicated, so make sure you have a handle on this before we continue. What to make this example more complicated than the first. It isn't this five. This five is a constant. We can just pull it out. It isn't really this seven. It's true that seven is not a perfect square, but we can still rewrite 7x as the square root of 7 times x squared. No, the problem is this too. We want a 1 here, so we need to get rid of this 2 somehow. And the trick we're going to use here is kind of similar to some stuff we did when we were defining our various formulas in chapter six. There, we sometimes had a delta x under a square root, and we wanted to get rid of it. And the way we got rid of it was to pull it out like this. If we want a one, Instead of a two, we can simply pull a two out of this difference. And when we pull a two out of two, we get one. Then the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. So we can pull that two out of the square root. And then we can get rid of it entirely at least as far as the integral is concerned. I already made the observation that this constant five can be pulled out. This constant can also be pulled out. Five 
over the square root of two times the integral of one over the square root of one minus seven halves x squared. And now that we've done this, this is basically our first example over again. I observed this for seven, and it's true for seven halves as well, that although this is not a perfect square, we can still rewrite this as u squared. It's just that our u is a little uglier. If u is the square root of seven halves, then this is u squared. As for this dx, well, du is the square root of seven halves dx. And let me go ahead and break this square root apart. It's the square root of seven over the square root of two dx. And the reason I broke this apart was just to make the next step a little prettier. Although I won't pretend that any of this is real pretty, we need to put this square root into the denominator. But we also need to divide by it. And writing this square root as the quotient of square roots means that instead of having one divided by the square root of seven halves, I have this. In the denominator, I haven't actually done my u substitution yet. So nothing changes. I still have this square root. squared but now we should be ready to go this will give us a du this will become u squared. This constant will simply be pulled out of the integral. And when we pull this out of the integral, it will be multiplied by this. This square root of two and this one over the square root of two will cancel, leaving us with five over the square root of seven times the integral of one over the square root 
of one minus u squared du. And this, this integral is the arc sign. Five over the square root of seven times the arc sine of u plus a constant of integration equals, I know you can't see it, u was the square root of seven halves times x. So the arc sine of the square root of seven halves times x. And again, a constant of integration times some number is still an arbitrary constant. Now, the book gives a summary of this whole process. It gives us the following. That the indefinite integral of du over the square root of a squared minus u squared is the arc sine of u over a plus our constant of integration. So, if we came at this using this formula, five over the square root of two minus seven x squared dx, what would happen? Well, we'd still have to write to this as a u squared, that is to say, instead of a constant times x squared, we have a single quantity being squared. So we'd still do u substitution using a different u though, because we're not doing anything with this two. Well, the statement that we're not doing anything with this two is slightly deceptive, I suppose. We are rewriting it as the square root of two squared so that it fits into this formula. So to turn this dx into a du, we need that square root of seven. And of course, we also divide by that. And in the denominator, we have the square root 
root of a number squared minus u squared. These are nothing we want in the integral. This and this, we'll just pull them out. Five over the square root of seven minus the integral of one over the square root of a number squared minus u squared du. And now we can use this formula. This is, we've got this constant still out front. The arc sine of u divided by a plus c. And this, of course, is what we got using um, the first formula. I'm ambivalent, though, about anything that increases the number of formulas students have to memorize. Um, I mean, learning this formula saved us a single step where we factor out to this a squared. I can't say that it radically simplified the problem. And you can't just memorize this instead of the first formula because the first formula comes directly from the derivative of the arc sign and you need to memorize the derivative of the arc sign. So I don't know, but this is there if you want to commit it to memory.